Growing up, how we grew up, the hill, Jersey City, born in the 80s during a heavy drug era, living in the midst of drug abuse, parent incarceration, violence, and even sexual trauma. We decided to use our God-given abilities to assist others in healing by telling their stories to the world. For us, as kids, it was music and visual arts that helped serve as a form of therapy. Now, we're on a mission as we feel a spiritual obligation to those battling trauma, to help them use their stories as inspiration to others. From the hill to healing. All right, so growing up in Jersey City, uh, it's always been, it, it, it has always been a place that I love. Um, and part of the reason why I love Jersey City was because of the staples. Um, people who have been here for forever, who have paved the way, who have who made uh, being successful look great. Um, we, we've had our share, uh, a fair share of uh, individuals who would tell us that like, yo, go to the streets, do this, do that, right? But the fact that we had Mr. Sluggo in Jersey City, who was a businessman, a man of God, who uh, he, he had laundromat, he still has a laundromat. Mm -hmm. um, he, you had, uh, I thought it was a church, but he said it never was a church. Uh, he, he just did a lot of great things and things that I remembered. And so I thought it was necessary um, to ask you guys to interview this gentleman who I, I revere in many ways. Um, in the 90s, I, I grew up right here on Boswick Avenue, um, and just seeing you as a man who always wore a suit, who always, you know, took out time for his community, who always <laughs> was uh, in his car giving the word of God. But then on uh, on uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, every morning when I would go to school, you would be in, in the store selling penny candies, right, which is a staple for our community as well. Uh, and so. Without further ado, I just want to introduce Mr. Slogo. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> no, so I, I want to start off with uh, the beginning, right? Um, let's let's start. I know your name is in Slogo. Give me Fred Marshall. Fred Marshall. Fred Marshall. Uh, you give me like where you were born, right? How was it growing up in Jersey City back when you were first born? What's your you know, well, when I was first born, you take like first and Jackson Avenue, a black man couldn't even sweep the street. Mm. Couldn't get the work on the garbage truck. Right. Wow. And so you, you, what, what part of the city did you live when you were born? On um, Kearney Avenue. Kearney Avenue. Wow. 33 Kearney Avenue. 33. So what was your biggest memory then? on uh, Kearney Avenue. Making money. Making money. How did you make money, Mr. Slow? <laughs> well, gambling. <laughs> gambling? I don't know. But I used to love to shoot dice. Oh, CeeLo? No, oh, okay, I maybe that's not, what we, that's not what you call it. No. All right, just crap? All right, nice. So, like, how old were you when you did it? Did you go to Jersey City Public Schools? Yeah, 14. 14. Where'd you graduate? Yeah, okay, nice. And then you stayed here after that as well? Oh, yeah. Nice. I love Jersey. Why, why do you love Jersey City so much? My people are here. Uh, yeah. So tell me how it was growing up on Kearney. Was it a house that you, a big old house that you grew up in? No. You guys drove the, the, the greatest Cadillac? What, like, what was it like growing up in Jersey City? Well, it was rough. It was so, it was so rough to rough with the rough. <laughs> <laughs> but God brought it through. God brought you through. Because I had a praying grandmother. Mm, a praying grandmother. And so I, I just want to get to like where you, you grew up in an apartment? No, it was a three family house. Oh, a cold three family house. Flat. Say that again? A cold water flat where we still a had cold water coal flat. and I, uh, wood. Mm. And Your grandmother owned that? No, we didn't own it. We used to rent it. See, that's when the Jewish people were here. They owned everything. Oh, wow. I, we okay. used to go and pay our rent right up the street here where they got this church on Wilkinson Avenue. Uh -huh. Right on the corner here. It used to be George J. Wolf. I'll never forget. George J. Wolf. Jewish guy. He owned, he owned everything. What year was this? 50s. Okay. 
So like during the sixties, I know that the civil rights was all over the, you know, the United States, but like, um, did you did you feel like you were discriminated, segregated up in, here in Jersey City around that time? Well, really, I never had no problem because I don't understand my place. Uh, and staying your place meant what? Staying my place is minding my own business. Like the man said, you see nothing, you hear nothing, you know nothing. <laughs> that was me. Wow. Okay. But I always want to have stuff. Okay. That makes sense. All my friends didn't mm -hmm. want nothing. They want to drink and party. Mm -hmm. But that was my thing. My thing was to have some. Was to have some. Hmm. And so, what created the hustler, like the hustler in you mainly? Right. Like you, you, you. Went, growing up in the '90s, I saw that you had like a bunch of businesses going. Like, where did that come from? You, you grew up with like. Well, see, my mother used to have. Um, a newsstand down by Boy the Railway. Okay. And she used to sell the newspapers. And we used to deliver the newspapers. But she always was the business lady. So she owned her business? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, do you remember how she got her newspapers? Well, to tell you the truth, then it was Central Railroad. Mm -hmm. With the railways. Yes. Down the hall. Okay. It was Central Railroad. And all white people used to always come to her store. And that's how she got the start selling papers. In 1973, she was the first black lady in this city that sold a daily newspaper. A black person couldn't even sell a paper. Wow. And she was able to do it. So you Five, have, those yeah. white people, you know, talking for it. Oh, okay. So you have that spirit all in you. So your mom gave birth to how many children? Twelve. Twelve. And what number were you? Three. You were number three. So you had a lot of responsibilities growing up. Talk to me about that. My mother always took care of us. She took care of you? And my parents, yeah, they took care of us. I mean, but See, you know, being the oldest, go ahead. No, my father, he used to be, he worked on the train. He was a, a waiter. Uh, and that was another thing black people could do. That's all they could go. He was being a waiter on the train, but he made money. By that, he had a good job at that time. Mm -hmm. Because people used to make like 65 cents, 70 cents an hour. An hour. Yeah. And you know, he was doing that for years. Wow. That sounds cool. So like, did you feel like you were privileged growing up, or did you feel poor growing up? I know I was poor. You know you were poor. I was so poor, my poor was poor. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of poison. Yeah, yeah, it's really poor. So, like, uh, like, give me, me an Flip example. Wilson. Give me your Flip Wilson. Right, he went to Snyder High School. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And me and Flip Wilson, we used to be so raggedy, our raggedy was raggedy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you, so you said poor, poor, poor. You're poor, poor. Said, right? right? So, how do we, uh, give me a, an example of how poor you were. Nothing. So you would Cold eat water flat. You would eat mayonnaise sandwiches. Oh well, we might eat the same thing: dinner, lunch, and supper. Like my mother might have eggs for breakfast, eggs for lunch, eggs for supper. Mm -hmm. We have potatoes for breakfast, potatoes for lunch, potatoes for supper. Mm -hmm. And my mother would took, you know, we always have something to eat. Nice. But we used to sleep on one another. We used to sleep in chairs. How many bedrooms were there? Mm, it's about five. But we had double decker beds. Okay. And you know, four of us were sleeping in double decker bed. Two, two. Uh -huh. Two up, two down. Oh, wow. Wow. So that was just normal for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So in the high school, were you like the, the stellar student? Like, did you get straight A's? Yeah, up and down. Mm -hmm. It's like the stock markets, up and down. <laughs> so, so what happened to you um, in high school or after high school that, that told you that, listen, the sluggo, the guy who was just getting by, right? Like, now he should be the business owner who loves God. Where did you get that from? Well, really, my mother. Okay. Yeah. 
So she would sell papers and you would help her? Oh, yeah, yeah, we own all of us. Okay. Uh, you take like Virginia Avenue Forest Street, we had all of them houses. Oh, wow. We used to sell like the Ebony uh -huh. and the Jet uh -huh. and all that stuff, all black papers. Wow. We did very good. Very good. And, and you guys would deliver it to people's houses? Oh, yeah. So what time would you wake up in the morning? You get up to five o'clock. Five o'clock. At six, yeah, we we worked. Oh wow, wow. And so you did all the deliveries in the morning. Oh yeah. All right, and then you went to school, and then what did you do after school? Come back and go to store. And no, it's still I'm working the store. So where was Sell the store? Papers. I tell you down by the rail. Down by the rail. Okay, okay. I thought it was just a stand. I didn't realize oh, no, that was no, no, uh, no. an entire store. store. Yeah, so in the store there were papers and candy. Candy. Ah, uh, okay. And yeah, that's where I got, I, maybe I got the candy bit. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, you, you said, what What was the, the time in your life where you felt like, wow, I really need to turn around and do better? Well, really, when I got shot. You got shot? In the head. What year was this? About, uh, I'd say 62. Okay. And, wow. I went to the hospital, medical center, two two weeks. Never been operated on. Don't take medicine. Wow. Oh, I did. Two weeks and you were out. Out. The third week, I was back to work. Oh, wow. I get a paper cut and I'm home longer than that. But you in trouble. Wow. So, uh, in the 90s, right? When, when do you feel like you were in your prime in terms of the the amount of businesses you had, you know, operating in this area right here? Well, see, the thing about it, I just want to, the neighborhood, interested in the neighborhood. So what, what were the things that you've owned in over the couple, over the decades? Oh, I owned a lot. Yeah, talk to us about that. Well, maybe I owned about five houses. Yeah. I had put in low. And I did it. Here. Laundromat. Free. Yeah. Well, this laundromat is the longest business in the state. In the state? Of New Jersey. Wow. wow. When, when wow. did you start this? 56 years ago. What made you say, okay, I want a laundromat on Boswick and I didn't want it. MLK? Didn't so, what happened? I came in here, man had a, a grocery store to get a PepsiCo and a cookie, mm -hmm. a cake. And he said, why don't you buy this place? I said, I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really interested in it. <laughs> Until after I got shot. Mm. And God did it. I had $5,000 in the bank. $5,000 in the 70s? Oh, yeah. Five thousand dollars? Man, wow. I have tons of money in the 70s. Okay, okay. Uh, and I was buying a house. Mm -hmm. The bank saw where I had the five thousand mm dollars. -hmm. So in the meantime, they put all the machines in here, did all the electric mm -hmm. and everything. And after they finished, they wanted their money. <laughs> and I didn't have it. Oh, God. I didn't have it. I God did it. God did it. I didn't have it. I never signed anything. Nothing. And God did it. I get I had to buy that knowledge to get the house where I live at now. And in the meantime, God did it. He did it. These Jewish men said, When are you going to pay us? I said, I don't have the money. And God did it. I paid them the way I wanted to pay, but I paid. 
installment. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but I didn't sign no paper. I didn't have to pay him nothing. Wow. My God, yeah. that's amazing. So I, I see that you are a man of faith. Oh. Yeah. And so these are the reasons that allowed you to see who God was. You got shot, and you didn't get no medications, anything. Within two weeks, you were back at work. Three, three weeks. No operations. You you got this. No that's operations. That's no amazing. Operations. No, the right. doctor never did nothing to me. God did it. And then this, you acquired this with no money. No tissues. Yes, I got you. Yeah, God did it. Oh, man. That's amazing. Blows my mind. So, in what ways have you devoted your life to God? Always. 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 So, yeah. I, 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 don't, I remember you saying that you didn't want to be a pastor. But you just wanted I am to. I a street pastor. You are a street pastor. Mm -hmm. I'm an ordained pastor. But you didn't want a building. No. Well, why not a building? That's so, that's typical, right? You, you become a pastor. You need a place to have your flock. Well, Why didn't you do a building? I, I got it. Mm. I got the biggest one there on the street. Mm. Everybody needs a street. Wow. Everybody needs a street, my members. Wow. And they ain't got to give me no offer. <laughs> <laughs> Just buy the candy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that money. <laughs> Take that money and put it in. Go buy the candy. <laughs> like, what advice would you give someone? who is struggling in the world and want to give their lives to Christ. Come to Christ. How? Accept him and mean it. You tell me anything, you can't tell him anything. Because he knows what you're thinking before you think what you think. He's right where you're going to go before you go wherever you're going to go. You already know. You don't fool him. People don't fool him. Billions of people come to church. Yeah. They ain't doing God no favor. I don't have no favorites. Uh, All the money belongs to God. It, it belongs to him anyway. Yeah. Every so, time you're in your pocket. So, I remember in the 90s, right? How did you fund the pro, the vacation Bible school? Work. You worked? And yeah. paid. And then, okay. Because I, I shared this story with you that, you know, growing up hit down the street, I remember your wife. That's who you said used to run the vacation Bible school. Mm -hmm. And how... Uh, Throughout, like within a week, you know, she taught us how to make pillows, right? So we had two sheets of paper, two uh, sheets of cloth, and we would like sew, right? Around, 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 and we would leave a hole, right? And we would flip it, put cotton inside of it, and then we would uh, sew it back up. So yeah. the fi finishing sewing, it, right? And like even today, right? When like I get a hold of my shirt or my t-shirt or whatever, I sew it and I don't even think twice about it. But like just like analog in my memory, I realized that like we these are the skills that we learned from that. Like she was supposed to be teaching the Bible, but she was teaching like the Bible and real life skills. Was that always a plan for you? Well in the beginning my wife didn't want me to Bible back there. Mm -hmm. But God put on my heart to do it. How did you convince her? Because I have a hard time convincing my wife these days. Well, <laughs> the thing about it, she didn't want to be bothered with that at first. Uh -huh. But I told her, I'm sorry. God told me to do it. Uh -huh. And God blessed me. And I did it. That's amazing, man. I see how humble you are, man. That's so amazing. It's so, uh, what, what advice would you give someone who wants to start his own business? Seek God. Seek God. Seek God. And, and I think seek he had, God, not me. Don't seek me. Mm -hmm. Seek God. And I think he has sought God. Woo! Right? And he hears a yes. What do you suggest, Mr. Slugger? Well, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye heavy laden. I'll do you rest. You know, try to mess. The mess don't mess you up. That's right. Why not try to mess? Jesus Christ. So, you know, what legacy do you want to leave behind? Jesus. About Jesus. Jesus. J E S U S. Jesus. Yes. You want to leave a legacy of That's Jesus it. Christ. Sure. He's going to get it anyway. Yeah. 
That's right. If you don't even mix us, we still gonna get it. And at the end, you and every one of us are going Say whatever you want to say. You can believe whatever you want to believe. You still got to meet him. still have to meet That's right. If he said every knee is going to bow, you going to bow. You going to bow. You going to bow. Hitler wish he could come back and tell the people, I met him today. <laughs> Too late. Stalin wish he could come back and say I made him sick. Too late. Those Muslims died without Christ. They wish they could come back. Too late. If Jesus said, I'm the only way. Money is not the way. Fame is not the way. Jesus Christ is the only way. Because at the end, it's just like this. You get on the turnpike, mm -hmm. and you go all the way to the end. What do you have to do? Stop. Pay. So you got to pay. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you, you got to pay. pay. Okay, yeah, all right. Pay. Yeah, I'm with you now. Go ahead. You have to pay. Everybody has to pay. <laughs> How much you got? What you got? What you know? How much education you have? You don't have Jesus, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Your trouble, trouble is in trouble. <laughs> Your trouble, trouble is in trouble. Yeah. Right. So I I got a chance to talk to you briefly, but I, I've learned that you're mm -hmm. 83 now. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. does it? What, what do you do as an 83 year old? What does your day look like? You wake up, you do what? Then you do what? Then you do what? Then you go to sleep. Like what? What does an 83 year old do with his days? I want to learn about God, so I stay in this world. Really? So you wake up and you go the straight Bible to the Bible? Said, uh -huh. The Bible said, that word have a hidden in my heart, where I might not sin against thee. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my bed. Yeah. I'm saying the word. Where I go? So you wake up in the morning, you read the Bible. I pray first. Oh, you pray first. At least an hour. Uh, hour? What time do you wake up? Two, three. In the morning? Well, I gotta pray. I just got to sleep at that time. Well, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's, so tr it's trouble in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it's trouble in trouble. <laughs> Wait, so you but wake I up at two or three? I got the bed at eight. Oh, eight. Come okay, up. that's fair. That's fair. So you wake up at like two or three, you pray for an hour. What, what does that consist of? Like, you're praying for like the homeless, you're praying for the Pope, you're praying for, like, who do you pray for? For an hour? I didn't need more than that. Uh, <laughs> wow. It's so good, the good is good. <laughs> <laughs> and so my name is Louis Spears. Make sure you pray for me too, okay? Add me to it. Do maybe uh, an hour and one minute. <laughs> Add me to that. You know? That's all you need, buddy, is this. That's right. And then, so after you pray, what happens? I read the Bible. You read the Bible. How do you determine like what, what you read for the day? Well, I have scriptures I read. Certain scriptures. So do you go where you left off the day before? Or is it like yeah. a daily devotional that you use? Like how do you choose what you're going to do? I change it. Okay. I never know. Uh -huh. And then after you read the Bible, what happens after that? Time to go to work. Time to go to work. Take a shower, get ready. Are uh, you out the door by what time in the morning? 8, 8.30. Okay. Wow. And then you come here? Yeah. And then you read the Bible again? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So what, outside of, so once you're done, how long do you spend here? They open. Huh? Is these open? We just had a, a, a customer come in. Yeah, this Thank is all know. organic. Yeah, you know, I, yeah it, the work never stops. <laughs> yeah. That's, oh, yeah, 50 cents on. I got two bags. Oh, okay. Thank you. Where, where's my cut? <laughs> Honesty. You see how honest the customers are? Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,
And so after you, you're here for how long? How many hours? Well, I get here at 9.30, I four. Okay. Okay. And then four, and once you go home, you eat dinner? Yeah. And then what happens after that? Well, I spend time with my wife. Spend time with your wife, absolutely. Right. Do you guys go on, like, hot, steamy dates? She don't like to go like we used to. We used to go all to my pay about that. Uh-huh. But I like to go. Nice. Okay. Because I'm a young man. I'm not looking to be 220. <laughs> <laughs> so you're young. Kid. That's right. <laughs> yeah, 225. That's right. <laughs> and so, you know, I love it that, that your life seems so um, youthful. Yeah. Right. So you, youthful and full. And so I just appreciate your perspective. Is there anything that you will want to uh, leave, the last thoughts that you would like to leave us with? Hey, y'all leave me a check. Ibn, <laughs> <laughs> Ibn has money. <laughs> I hope, you, hope you get cash out. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah, it. Nice to you. It's an awesome. But awesome. let me tell you, young men, stay focused. Yes, that's the case. Stay focused and stay with God. Stay with God. Regardless what anybody wants to do, stay with God. Stay with God. It, it's interesting because anytime you talk about God, you get very emotional about it. What bring, what brings on the emotions? You feel like you would be nothing about it. You look at you reading God's head, this ain't your way. That's right. Mm -hmm. You thought this was your way? No. It's God's head. It's God's head. Take it when you get ready. And like I know there's only two of you guys out of twelve left on earth. Mm -hmm. Alright? So two is this is a two part question. Did any of your other siblings uh take on the business acumen that you and your mom have? No. No. So everyone is just working and you know, regular jobs, whatever, right? Um, and then the other part of the question is, like, um, what, what do you think, what, what do you think, your, do you, sorry, do you think your mom will be proud of you? Oh, well, I guess so. You guess so. Yeah. Okay. She came through Christ. Let me She was a Baptist. She uh -huh. said, I'm a die Baptist. Mm -hmm. Every Wednesday, she tell people, my son, mm -hmm. that was me. Mm -hmm. She didn't want nobody around but me. And she accepted Christ. Wow. Every Wednesday, we came. So I think you were her favorite. Would you say that? No. <laughs> 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 yeah. Right. Every Wednesday. I just want to ask you Nice. Okay. That that pretty much concludes. All right. That's okay. Um, yeah. I just got two more questions for you, but I'll let I'll let you uh I'll let Spears wrap up first. Just two questions for you. Uh so so growing up in the community, I never understood the the I, I never understood the path. Uh, that Mr. Sogo took. I just saw him as who he was. He's a prominent, powerful figure in our community. But having this conversation with you, Mr. Sogo, I realized that it, a lot of the things that I try to do on my own, I, I'm realizing that it was a power of God who, who has led you and that who I have to let lead me. Uh, at this age, right, I'm 36. Um, it's, it's, I'm always thinking, I have to do this, I have to do that, which causes like anxiety, which causes depression, which causes, you know, a bunch of things that, that are, are in mind, you know what I mean? And, uh, and I just appreciate just hearing the wisdom that you have, um, not just as an 83-year-old, but as an 83-year-old man who loves Christ, who is a family man, who loves his community. Uh, and and you're, you're definitely someone I would want to emulate my life after. Especially after having this conversation with you. Jesus. Listen, because you're following Jesus, I think it's safe to follow no. you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right.